Hello the Pioneer viewers, how are you doing? I hope you are hopefully and well. As the Pioneer team, we will bring you the latest developments in Russia-Ukraine war. As we mentioned in our previous reports, the situation in Avdiivka was quite problematic for the Ukrainian armed forces. As we are preparing this report, we see that the Russian armed forces have started to dominate in Avdiivka. According to reports, the situation is still critical because the Ukrainian army is stuck in the middle of the narrow corridor surrendered on both sides by the Russian troops. In fact, a big strategic mistake was made here. And what was the mistake? And what is the latest situation of Zivka? Let's analyze it together. As the Pioneer team, we continue to bring the Russia-Ukraine war to your screens. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss our daily map reports and reports on the agenda. You can also support me and my team by using the super thanks button below the videos. Let's start if you are ready, the Pioneer reports. Let's start today's report with the latest developments on the Donetsk front line. As we mentioned before, the situation here is quite problematic. It is an unsolvable problem. Of course not, but some conditions make the situation here even more difficult. Let's see the region on the map. First, in particular, let's look at the Avdivka region first. As you can see, the Avdivka area is surrendered on three fronts, Espertivnaya, Sobronaya and Chernivshevstogo. The streets are almost completely under control of the Russian Air Force. In the northwest, the Russian armed forces have broken through the Ukrainian defense line and were approaching Lastokchin. This is a big problem for the Ukrainian armed forces, which are stuck in the center of Avdiivka because there is no room for the Ukrainian troops to retreat. You can see the corridor here. The withdrawal of the Ukrainian troops from the corridor means that the Russian armed forces will come under the fire from two fronts. This will be a retreat that could result in a huge losses. Russian troops have already been badly worn down by the Ukrainian troops during the fighting area. In the fact, the Ukrainian sources who made this statement recently claim that the Russian troops have suffered around 20,000 casualties during nearly five months of fighting. The primary goal of the Ukrainian army here was to increase the casualties of the Russian army. And this phase of the plan, they were indeed successful, but this is not to prevent the fall of Avdivka. Now Ukrainian troops have two options in the front of them. The first option is to pass through this uh, bottleneck with intense fire support and create a rare defense line. And this is a sad but realistic option. We believe that this should be the decision of the headquarters of the Ukrainian armed forces. This will open up the possibility of the next counterattack. The second option is to immediately counterattack and trying to repel Russian troops in Avdiivka. Perhaps a strategy of deception can be applied here. Let's put it this way. According to some sources, the Russian armed forces shifted their troops to the vicinity of Robotin after the progress made here. Therefore, the capacity of the Russian armed forces here has decreased, and it will decrease even more in the coming days. Therefore, the Ukrainian army should remain silent and even retreat here for a while and allow Russian troops to move to the Robotin front. An attack on the softening and declining Russian lines here will only make sense of uh, this, that it is going to relocation take place. At the moment, we don't know that the General Sirsky is planning, what, what, what is he planning? But what we do know is that how much and how impact General Sirsky's decisions will have on the war. On the other hand, this situation on the Donetsk front line is of course not limited to Avtivka. This is also Novomikhailivka. According to reports, the situation in Novomikhailivka is also becoming critical. Here too, we are seeing intense offensives and attacks by the Russian troops similar to those on Avdiivka. The latest reports indicate heavy fighting in the southeastern outskirts of the northeastern neighborhoods of the town. And although here have been no significant border changes so far, this area should also be carefully monitored and precautions taken. If measures are not taken, we are likely to see a similar situation here as in Avdiivka. On the Donetsk front line, apart from Avdiivka and Novomikhailivka, there are counter clashes in the Stepnevi area. However, these are taking place within the framework of mutual engagement. Therefore, we cannot, and actually we cannot talk about a positive or a negative impact of these clashes on the front line. When we look at the artillery activity in the region, we see that the artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Avdiivka, Severnoi, Lastochkin, 
Taneki, Pobeda and Novomikhailivka. In contrast, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted Marinka, Slavny, Opitny, Kruta, Balka, Vulyadny and Kaminka. Now let's look at the situation on the Zuprigia front line. Here we can speak of the uncomfortable silence. As we mentioned earlier, this is a high probability that Russian troops will launch an offensive here. And the Russian army will probably move here to recapture the positions captured by the Ukrainian army during the summer offensives. But when? There is no clear date at the moment, and however, we mentioned this will happen after the Avdiivka issues is completely closed. Until then, the Ukrainian army needs to focus on this area as well. It is really a huge workload, isn't it? So far, the Ukrainian army has repelled almost all Russian attacks in the area, but this time the Russian attacks will be even more fierce than before. The Ukrainian army needs more artillery shells and fire support. Once the Russian offensive starts, the only thing that can stop it is more firepower. According to reports on the Robotin sector of the Zuprigia front line, counter battles are taking place with some of the village of Robotin near Novoprokopovka and Verbo. The fact that the Ukrainian army is still on the offensives on this front line is valuable because it is shows that, actually it is showing that there isn't still enough capacity for defense. Therefore, the situation here will be different from Obdivka. The fighting has not resulted in any border changes for either side. Looking at the artillery activity in the area, we see that the units of the Russian armed forces targeted Robotny, Malayatuk Makta, and Novodeny Livka. In contrast, artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces targeted Novoprokopivka, Kopani, and Ichenkov. Let me briefly touch on the situation on the Bakhmut and Luhansk front line as well. According to reports, on the Bakhmut front line, the Russian armed forces launched an offensive near Ivanivsky and Bogdanivka. However, Ukrainian troops held their positions. On the Luhansk front line, Russian forces are trying to enter Blugorovka. Fighting continues in the industrial zones east of the village. Ukrainian armed forces are making tactical retreats and then launching counterattacks. This strategy of the Ukrainian troops seems to have been successful so far. So no border changes have been reported in the region so far as well. Now it's your turn. Tell me what do you think? How do you think the fall of Avdivka will affect the front line? Will Russian troops be shifted to the Zaprizia front line? Will this change the fate of the war? Let me know in the comments. Because you know that I read and I care about all the comments.